Hi everyone, this is Trisha, and I'm back again today with another watercolor project from Art Impression Stamps. Today I thought I would do a little different scene, although it is still in winter scene. I know you guys are probably tired of winter scenes by now, but they're my favorite. So I thought I would just try to do this little dog looking at this little bird who's flying into its house. And it was just too cute with this little, I love this little dog stamp. So the first step is I started out with this little step, this little stump. And I inked it all up with my sepia. And then I just went in with my mocha and just kind of hit a couple of different areas so it would have a little variation when I stamped it down. And I'm gonna stamp that kind of towards the bottom, the middle of the page. So that's my focal image, and I'm going to pull out the color to this little stump. Now, as usual, I did a little bit of pulling out the color out of the lines, and then I go back in and I'm adding a lot of color to this little stump because I really wanted it to um, be a really rich brown color. And I'm just pulling, now right now I'm pulling that color into the center but I'm also trying to pull some lines out because wood has lines throughout so I'm just trying to use those artist drawn lines and then adding a couple of my own in between so that it has some real good depth to it I love this little stump it's very cute so now I'm just like I said pulling some of that color up and into the middle like in a line kind of going with the shape of this little stump and then pulling just pulling lines in and out and touching all of those little knotted areas and what, what I'll do next is use my palette and put some Tombow it's actually the it's called coral it gives a nice I use it for my sand when I'm doing sand projects and stuff like that, it, it's just got a really nice color and I haven't found one, a Marvy marker that's the same. I'll do that though. I'll use, I'll interchange my Tombos and my Marvies. I don't necessarily need to just stick with one type of marker. If I can find a color that I like in another type of water color based or water based marker, then I'll, I'll use that. Just... When I'm on the go, it, it tends to be a little more difficult because then I have to bring a ton of markers with me, which I really should just try to find like something to keep my most used markers with me instead of carrying all of them. But I find when I do stuff like that, I end up needing something that I didn't take or I want to do something different or I get bored. and So it never works out for me. I always end up needing what I don't have. So I tend to just bring everything I own when I travel. My husband and I come to Vermont a lot. We have a house up here, and I always feel like every weekend we're coming up here, I'm taking every single part of my craft room with me because I need it at home and I need it here. And sometimes I don't touch them, but it's those times when I don't have them that I wish I did. So I tend to just bring them with me just in case. So as you can see, that coral really gives a nice color to this little stump. Now I'm just coming in here with my brush and some more sepia, or I think that's sepia. It could be, actually it's probably mocha. It's a little darker than sepia. And just to really accentuate those highlights and those, those shadows so that stump really, really pops out at you. This is such a fun stump to, to color. And I could have sped this up, but I really didn't feel the need to do that right now because I wanted you to see it in real time, how, how it came to life. It doesn't take that long, really. And I think just that extra, those extra colors and just brings a little bit more to the picture. That's my opinion anyway. And you know me, I'm all about detail and overcoloring and overshadowing. You could do this a lot quicker if you just pulled um, color from the, from the outside in. So now I'm using my African Violet and all I'm doing with my fine tip is just drawing in a little bit of snow on top of that 
stump. It's very easy. It's just a little curve and then I added a little bit of a squiggly line so that it have a has a little depth, a little depth. And now I'm just kind of pulling some of that color out so that it gives some shadows into that little um, little pile of snow there. And now I'm going to pull it out above it so that it makes that really that white really pop out. So when you're doing snow, you always want to use either a blue or an African violet. I always use African violet, but blue would work just as fine. So now it's time for the little puppy. He's so cute. So I'm going to ink him up with some sepia. And I'm going to place him right next to, um, right next to the stump. I wanted him to look like he was set a little bit behind it, not right next to it, to give the paint give the painting a little more depth. Perfect. So now all I'm going to do, I'm actually going to take my stamp positioner and I'm going to put in my little birdhouse. I'm just inking this up again with some sepia. And I'm going to do this before I do the trees going to hang on because I, I can make that around where this little this little birdhouse is going to be. But I kind of wanted him to be looking at the bird flying into the birdhouse. I wanted to put it up in his eye line above his head. So I use my stamp positioner to put it right where I want. And then I'm just going to stamp it in there. And now I'm just going to eyeball this little, this little bird. I just want him to look like he might be flying into his little birdhouse there, or towards his birdhouse. So I'm going to take the top of that fir tree, the one that I use all the time, and I'm just going to start creating some firs where, around this birdhouse where it might be hanging into, in this tree. And I'm just inking it up a few times and then stamping it. I didn't kind of want, I wanted the tree to look like it was off on the left hand side and not just look like it was kind of floating out there. So I was doing my best to make it look like, you know, the tree was really on that left hand side and all you're really kind of seeing is the branches. Someone just stuck a little, a little birdhouse in there for this, for this little bird. So after I did that, I decided to come in here and soften those pine trees. Just soften that up with some water. I'm not I'm trying not to use a lot because I really like the definition of those of that stamp. So I'm using, I believe, a pine green, which makes sense because it's a pine tree. So pine green is the perfect color for it. And I'm just going in and softening up some of those branches. You might want to make sure when you're doing this too that you're leaving white space so that it doesn't look like a big pile of green but it actually has some depth and that's the way you create that illusion of depth is you leave white space in between those branches. So now we have that done. So we're going to come in here now and we're going to soften up the lines on the birdhouse itself. I decided not to give the birdhouse a snowy roof, so I'm just following those lines and pulling the color into the middle. I will also add some additional color to this little birdhouse. And then I'm just going to pull from the sides into the middle to make that birdhouse look circular. It's not flat, it's actually a little cylinder there. So now I'm going to drop my brush. <laughs> that happens a lot, if you can believe it. But I'm going to come back in here with some water and I'm going to soften this little dog up. I'm just going to be really careful with his face because I want his face to stay white. So I'm just pulling a little bit of color out of those lines to soften them up. Pull a little bit into his nose. And then I'm going, instead of going into his ear, I'm going underneath his ear 
and then just on the very top because I want that ear to pop out and the way you do that, the way you make it dimensional is you color underneath it. So then it's going to give it a little bit more depth so it doesn't look like it's flat. So I'm going to go around here, just put a little bit more color into him. And then I'm going to move on to his body. And I'm just going to start pulling the color. He's kind of a white dog. And I'm going to give him some spots. So I don't want to completely take all the color into him. I just want to create shadows. And I'm going to add some more water or some more color to him from the palette as well. So I'm really kind of just chasing, tracing him. And then where I want a shadow or two, I'll pull a little bit more, like right underneath his butt where his hind leg is. I pulled a little bit out and underneath his tail. Just pulled a little bit out. So it gives his, his legs a little bit more depth. And then the top of his back. As you can see, my tip, the tip of my brush is really pointed because he's really small. And I'm not using a ton of water. I just want to be able to pull that, that color out of the sides and just keep it, keep it right along his, around, bleh, around the long, the, all right, can I not talk? I just want to pull it out from the lines. I don't want to really bring a lot into him. Okay, there we go. We got it out. Sometimes I really just can't talk. And he's cute and we could have left him. I could have left him like this. He looks like a little lab with his little brown colors, but I really wanted him to look almost like a, I'm trying to think of what kind of dog that is. I used to have a dog named Lucky and he had the same kind of coloring with the, with the spots. I just can't remember what kind of dog he was. He was some kind of hound that liked to do ducks, liked to chase after things. So now I'm going to take some color from my, from my palette. And I think it's just leftover color from my stump. And I'm going to give him a little bit of a spot on his tail and then a little bit of a spot right on his back. Just so he looks like he's he's got a couple little spots of color on him. So now I'm coming in here with some mocha. And I just really wanted to darken these areas up. So I'm kind of just going around the curve of that tail. Adding a little bit more color to that spot on the top. And then just darkening in some of these little shadows. So they really look dark. That back foot there would be really dark. Put a little, give him a little spot on his toe. <laughs> just thought that looked cute. And then just kind of made these shadows a little bit, a little bit deeper. The best thing about this is you can make this little dog any way you want. You can give him spots. You can make him brown. You can make him beige. You can make him pink for all it, you know, it doesn't really matter. It's your imagination. I really wanted this little spotted guy. I'm just steeping up those shadows a little bit more. You'll notice the bottom of his front feet, there's no line. I left that part off because I'm going to put some snow under there and I didn't want that line to be there anymore. So I just didn't ink it up when I stamped him originally. And I'm kind of flicking so that he's got some, looks like he's got some fur. I'm just softening out just the edge of, of those lines. You can see I don't have a, I don't have a ton of water on my brush. A damp brush is more than adequate to just soften stuff up. Now I'm going to come in underneath that ear and I'm just going to darken that up some more. 
So that dark, if that's really, really dark under there, it's going to really pop that ear up, which is what I want. So I'm going to go under both sides of it and just really make it dark. And sometimes you'll notice with watercolor, you're, you think things are really dark and then they end up drying back a little bit lighter than you wanted. So you have to come in with a little bit more color just to darken those spots up. So again, I'm probably being overly particular and overly anal about this. Like I said before, you can get as in-depth or you know, not in-depth as you want. I tend to be a little more on the crazy side. But I know it, so it's okay. <laughs> now see if I how I put that dark right behind his elbow of that front feet that front foot. It really makes that front foot come forward. And I gave him a little spot on his ear too. And then just a little bit more color around his face. Not a lot because I want that I want that face to really stay really stay as white as possible. Apparently really wanted to get into that little that little nook where his his face and his neck kind of separate. So I took a really fine, so I moved down to a number two brush. And a number two brush is just really small, so it enables you to do some really fine details. And I was just adding a little bit more shadow on that front foot and then that little nook underneath his underneath his mouth again this is just an added step just a little detail it is not necessary it just depends how long you want to spend on your pictures some people only want to do a quick picture me I tend to like to paint so it enables me just to be able to get really detailed now I had stamped the little bird in African violet because I wanted him to be white. That's why I'm using this number two brush on him because he's got a lot of fine details, his wings and stuff like that, and I didn't want them to wash out. I just wanted to pull the color out so he really popped. And doing that with my big brush might have worked, and I probably could have gotten away with it, but. I wanted to make sure this was really, it's a really delicate little bird. So I wanted to make sure I didn't screw it up, especially because I had worked so hard on the dog in the stump. So I wanted to be really careful on how I, how I did this bird. So I'm really just pulling some of that color just like I did with the dog, pulling in some highlights under his, under his, between his neck and his head. And then I thought, oh, I really want it to, it's a winter scene, so it really needs to be a winter bird. So I wanted to do, I think it's a chickadee, is the, the winter bird. It has like a little black head. So we just came in here and wanted to darken up some of those lines. And then just bring in a little bit of color. He's pro pre predominantly white, but he does have some highlights and I think it's a black head. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure he has a black head. So I think I came in here with some, some black 
just a very little bit of black and just went over his head with it and right above his eye. And it just gives him a nice little, I think it gave him a nice little look, a little more realistic look. And I'm just going to finish up with a little more detail on his wing. I'm trying to darken up just the bottoms of those wings a little bit more. And that dog is really interested in that, in that little bird. So now I'm just coming in again underneath there, just a little more highlights. And just to soften out that line so it wasn't so predominant over his, over his eye. Now I've put some African Violet down here on my palette. And I'm just going to go in here with my brush and draw in some snow. So like I said, so if I, by putting the line in back of him and in front of him, it gives the illusion that he's standing in a pile of snow. And it kind of gives a three-dimensional look to him. Sets him on a hillside with, with snow instead of just standing on one little portion of snow. So I'm just going to add some snow around this little tree stump. And it would have some shadows, so I'm just pulling those shadows right out using the tip of my brush. If you notice, I'm not re, I'm not getting more color. It's okay if, it, if it's a little lighter. The variations in color are good. And then with a clean brush, just, just water, clean brush, I'm just softening those lines so they're not so harsh gives a little more depth to it. I need a new word, depth. I have to find a new word. <laughs> I use that word way too much. So I'm just going in, softening all of those, softening all the snow up. And I'm kind of just using the tip of my brush. It's kind of flat because I want it to hold a little bit more water than I normally have just so that it will soften those lines out and give some great shadows. So adding a little bit more to the outside. By pulling a little bit of the color out on the outside of your image, it gives it a little more, here we go again, it gives it a little more depth, makes it a little look a little more 3D, makes it pop off the page a little bit more. You see I'm sopping some of the water up with my paper towel if I feel like I got a little too much. Now I believe I'm adding a little bit of red to my palette. And I'm going to come in here and add a little bit of color to this little birdhouse. So you have all this white and brown. I thought it needed a little red. Make it stand out a little bit more, attract some more birds. So I kind of put that, I put that red on the outside and now I'm just going to use some water and pull that color into the center. and soften that out. You want to maintain that highlight in the middle. Just pull some. Red is a very strong color, so you can do a lot without having to put a lot on your brush. So I tend to go a little bit lighter, lighter and then come in and 
add a little bit more slowly so that it's not overpowered. And then I'm going to add some sepia to the roof. I'm not going all the way down, I'm just doing the top. And then add the little hole so the little bird can go in if he wants, although I think he's just a little too big for that little birdhouse, but I could be wrong. So just taking some of this African violet and I'm going to use it to highlight and get into some of those um, into some of those crevices just for an additional highlight just to darken that right up. African violet's a great darkening color. It's great for shadows. And then I'm just going to add a little bit more to the bottom of this little birdhouse just to give it a little more oomph. I guess we'll call it oomph. And then just soften those out. So now I'm coming in with some more red, just along those shadows on the sides and underneath the, how, the roof of that little house just to really darken that up and give a little more color to it. I'm pulling that color from the sides right into the middle again, maintaining that highlight, and then adding a little to the bottom. Just softening what the color I just laid down. So I'm taking my sepia marker the back of it and I'm just adding in I lost a little bit of that that bottom so I just drew it back in and then I'm really darkening up the little hole and then some of the shadow areas just going in and darkening them right up you can do this I think it really adds to your projects gives you gives it a lot of depth again depth <laughs> and along the side too when you when you go over this red with this brown, it really gives you a nice a, a nice shadow on the sides. So I really recommend doing that. And then just going in with your with your brush and just softening it out. Just so it's not a harsh line. So I'm taking that fir branch, the same one I used to make the tree, and I'm just going to create a little a little tiny pine tree here kind of felt like it was missing something and I wanted it to sit behind the stump so I don't want to stamp it over the stump so I'm going to use a post-it note and just mark off that that stump so that I don't um, stamp over it I have my perfect little tree behind the stump so as I finish certain parts of the project I usually sit back and look at it and think well what else do I what else could I do and I thought this little bird needed a little bit more of a shadow underneath where its belly was so I came in here with my brush and just added a little more and then gave him a little orange beak with the back of my pen it was just way too small of an area to use a paintbrush so I just use the back of my pen. Now I'm going to come in and soften up those lines on that little tree. Making sure I leave some white space. And then just really pulling that color out of the lines. Remind me of a little, a little tiny Christmas tree right there next to that little stump. But they're in the woods, so. I was trying to soften out that little green piece that stamped really dark, but it ended up being fine. 
Don't sweat the small stuff. Stuff like that is not a big deal. No one even is even going to care. So I'm taking some blue and I'm just making some cloud shapes around those around those characters. I'm, you notice I'm not getting too close to anything. I'm not trying to paint in between everything. I'm just giving the, the hint of a sky behind them. I didn't want to get too close because then sometimes when you get too close and you try to get up close with that, it just doesn't work. And then it, it starts to look um, forced. So I'm going to add some more water here just to soften some of those lines so I get a variation of color. As you know, skies are my thing, so I really like to play around with these and see what kind of shapes I can get. And my paper towel to blot everything up. Yep, I need a little bit a little bit less there just to give some nice variation in the clouds. And just adding a little bit more of that African violet underneath this tree so it grounds it a little bit better. Gives it a little shadow on the ground. And then I put a little bit more underneath where the tree actually was and then soften that out. The paper was very wet at that point and I wanted to make sure it didn't go too far. So we're done. I signed and dated it. And that's the completed project for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. There's some more videos linked here if you want to try them out. And if you want to hit that subscribe button, you can get notified when I upload new videos. Thank you so much for stopping by and have a great day.